zombies, mummies, giant babies, werewolves, killer dolls, and much more await you in Zombies Ate My Neighbors for the Super Nintendo, which is undoubtedly one of the best named video games of all time. Now I think this game is a real gem, but what is it that makes it so good? In Zombies Ate My Neighbors, you play solo or co-op as a couple of kids trying to save the world from zombies and a variety of other monsters. I generally pick the boy because he has 3D glasses and a Bart Simpson haircut. The game packs an enormous amount of content with dozens of levels to play. You must try to save at least one of your neighbours from the monsters in order to progress. So long as you get one, any others merely make up bonus points. There's a large variety of weapons to choose from, ranging from a water gun to a bazooka to a fire extinguisher, so pretty much all your monster destroying needs will be met. It's important to know that some weapons work better depending on the monster you're fighting. There's also a ton of collectible stuff, some of it is just for points, and some of it makes up items that you can use to fight the various foes you will encounter. In terms of the enemies, there's zombies, chainsaw men, killer dolls, giant insects, the Frankenstein monster, and so many that basically, if it's ever been in a movie, it's in this game. You'll instantly be reminded of them, Child's Play, Night of the Living Dead, Invasion of the Saucer Man, Creature from the Black Lagoon, and about a million other titles. There's a great deal of humour and affection for cinema here, and the game will definitely make you laugh, but in terms of difficulty, this is not a casual game, because as you progress, things can get pretty tough. Ammo in this game can become scarce, and enemies can become overwhelming. The graphics and sound department have done a fantastic job. I love the variety of music in this game, and the sound effects are really funny. Especially the screens. Once the neighbours have all either been rescued or killed, a door will appear for you to go to the next stage. But you can actually stay in the stage if you want to go around and collect various different power-ups and ammo. Now one interesting thing to note is that this game was made by LucasArts. You know, as in George Lucas, the creator of Star Wars. So technically, when you're fighting the monsters in the game, you're doing so with the Force. Hell, you actually can find George Lucas in the credits stage. You could tell the developers were having some real fun with this one. There are over 40 levels in the main game, and there are also several bonus stages, so there really is more than enough to keep you interested for quite a while, and many of the levels do feel different from one another, so you don't feel like you're just doing the same thing again and again. The sheer amount of secrets packed in this game is quite frankly staggering. You'll have a great time trying to find hidden doorways that lead to more items, and sometimes more intriguing enemies. One of the irritating things about the game is that sometimes when you check closets and chests for items, an enemy will pop out instead and deliver some unavoidable damage. So unless you memorise the levels and what chests contain what, you're going to take some unfair hits. But that's a fairly minor issue. Let's go over some of the weapon combinations you'll want to use. The cans are really good for taking out the dolls, silver plates are good for beating the werewolves, and the fire extinguisher will at least slow down the chainsaw men, who I believe are actually indestructible. I guess the only disappointing thing about the weapons is that you can't outright dig dog and use a bike pump. To find the neighbours, you can display a minimap that will roughly guide you to where you need to go, and you can turn it off when you're not using it, so that's fantastic. I mean, this game is fantastic. What other game features both references to movies such as Honey, I Blew Up the Kid and Invasion of the Body Snatchers? This is just a love letter to cinema that we have here. As you move through the levels, the sheer carnage will astound you. Why don't we have more games like this? We need a sequel in which you, you turn into a Transformer and team up with Gorp from The Day the Earth Stood Still, fight Godzilla and the Klingons in the volcano base from James Bond. And that's just the tutorial. For a game so filled with humour, you'd think the gameplay wouldn't be so great, but most everything feels smooth. Occasionally when you need to change weapons quickly, it can be annoying to have to scroll through all of them, but pretty much everything else works fine. 
As I mentioned, you collect lots of stuff throughout this game. One thing you'll be collecting is keys. You'll end up collecting more of them than in Super Pac-Man. And does that really have any relevance? No, but I just wanted to give a quick shout out to the great Super Pac-Man, which like Zombies Hate My Neighbours, you should definitely play. If you're wondering about what the story is, then all I have to say is that zombies are going around eating your neighbours, and you can't tolerate that. Because who else is going to complain about you kicking a ball in your garden, mowing the lawn on Sunday and such? Now, what could this game do to improve, aside from including Dig Dug's bike pump? How about we have a level in which you turn into a giant purple monster and beat up the Frankenstein monster? Wait, they already have that in here. You see, I got nothing. Nothing. You could play all the way through this game and miss out on a ton of stuff, but there's lots of it as well hidden. So there really is an incentive to replay this game. It's not just one that you're going to go through and then be done with. All round, if Zombies Ate My Neighbors doesn't wow you with its intention, hysterical gameplay, then I'll be surprised. And so much to offer that it really is a great time on the Super Nintendo. A console which you can also play some Mortal Kombat 2 on in all its glory, right after you finish up saving your neighbours. If I haven't already made it clear, I highly recommend Zombies Ain't My Neighbours. I'm looking forward to the sequel, which will undoubtedly have to be called Neighbours Ate My Zombies.